think back in the days Arsenal was a French team from the yeah. Premier League. Yeah. They had Arsene Wenger, they had so many French players who were successful with the team already. I had friends, Abu Dhabi, which I played with in, in France, who moved to Arsenal. Mm -hmm. uh, and to me, it was just a natural choice. And I was very pleased and blessed to be able to, to sign for the club. Mm. I didn't realize first because it goes so fast and with the pressure and the transfer, you don't realize. When they first approached me, I think they saw me in uh, the European 20, Under-21 Cup in Portugal, 2006. Uh, we reached semi-final and I had a great tournament, you know. And uh, I think they came for 38 games the following season with Oxa. Yeah, They came to watch 38 games? 38 games, different people also. It's quite funny that I said to you in the makeup room, 38 shirts, remember? Yeah. <laughs> Guys, welcome to another episode of Jibber with Jabba. Today I have a legend with me, um, ready to talk about a lot of things. He's had many, 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 many sports achievements. But also I want to just, you know, say now that I also have my 100 meter swimming badge and my 400 meter swimming badge. So I've got a quite a few accomplish accomplishments myself. <laughs> um, you know, you could put me up there as a Hall of Famer in school. Um, Salam alaikum. Salam. Sanya. How are you? Thank you for taking out the time and coming down, man. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me. How are you loving Dubai now? I'm living the dream. You know, it was uh, always a dream for me to come here and move to Dubai since I first came in 2009. So I'm family here. I moved to Dubai in August and I'm very pleased because I'm waking up every day mm. with a big smile. Yeah. With well, the sun. What about Dubai made you think, okay, this is the place that I want to be? Look, it's a, it's a dream place. Mm -hmm. It's very safe for family, uh, for kids, especially, mm -hmm. especially when we see what's happening in the world. And I uh, have many friends here and it's a, it's a land of freedom. You know, you, mm -hmm. don't, you, you don't feel to have a judgment from anyone. And uh, as I say, people live peacefully and everyone is, is happy. Everyone is positive. So, yeah. It's just so safe. Like even my friend upstairs watching now, Daniel, he's he's here from Germany visiting. <clears throat> so, you know, the first couple of times I was taking him out, he had his laptop in the bag in the car. And uh, gripping it. Yeah, yeah. And, and when we were going into the <laughs> mall and stuff. I was like, okay, leave your bag. And he was like, but it has my laptop in it. And I was like, no, no, leave the bag. It's fine. He's like, but my whole life is in that laptop. <laughs> I was like, bro, just leave. Don't worry. This is Dubai. Like <clears throat> there is no way anything's getting stolen. Yeah. And then I left and. He, like the look on his face was like, are you not going to lock your car? <laughs> and I, was like, I haven't locked my car since I moved here 10 years ago. Like the key is literally inside. Yeah, and you know, it's so safe, right? Look, you're used to it. But yeah, yeah. when you first come, we're like, you know, a bit lost. Yeah, yeah. You know, we need to earn that trust. Yeah, yeah. But I think it's the safest place in the world. Yeah, you're not getting away with anything here, bro. Yeah. This is like full on matrix. Uh, <laughs> Crazy. Like they're going to know anything that you do. Unfortunately, I know because I'm, while I'm driving, I'm receiving text message. Fine. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Right. <laughs> exactly. Whatever you're doing, oh, like, they're on uh, your case. Well, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and the problem is, is that fine is from two days ago. So well, you're looking at your phone, you're looking at the fine, but you're getting another fine now for the next two crazy. days that you're going to get a text message for. Crazy. Bro, it's crazy. So for those of you who don't know, I just want to say now, so before off camera, me and Bakari were talking about how much we like running. And uh, so we're starting a charity team. He really wants to do the next Desert Warrior Challenge. So if you guys want to join Bakari's team, mm -hmm. um, we'll put the link down below of where they can join and uh, and do it. And maybe a triathlon as well, right? I will have to think about it. <laughs> I did that one uh, with my friends from Dubai, Dubai Future Foundation. Yeah. I did it for them, not for mm -hmm. myself, because halfway I was thinking, why? <laughs> why did I do that? You know? It's the worst, right? It's the I worst. keep doing this since 15 years old. So yeah, yeah. why? Why? Yeah. <laughs> That's crazy. Who were your inspirations um, growing up in football? From honestly, a younger age? Honestly, I want to say the French national team itself. All of them? All of them. You okay, know, wait. In those days, what, what, what year are we talking? Uh, Lilian Thuram, uh, oh, Marcel okay. Desailly, uh, Didier Deschamps, who was yeah. and became my coach. Wow. Uh, Zinedine Zidane. I remember they had a lot of criticism mm. back in the days and uh, the way they reacted on the pitch and the way they, they became successful just taking together and I was mm. just amazed and I was like 15 years old. Mm. I like Paris Saint-Germain all days with Valdo, Rai, all these guys and uh, yeah, it was fascinating to see uh, the way they could accept the criticism and, and react, you know. Mm. You need to be strong mentally. And I realized after you have to be strong mentally because it's not easy. 
but who is there anyone that anyone that stands out to you that was just like wow just this this, this guy diff- yeah like uh, you know the days of i mean when i was growing up you know there was the maradonas the pele's mm-hmm. and, and these things showing mm-hmm. my age showing my age now but is there anyone that was just like i mean for me <clears throat> footballing wise also zizu is he was my idol bro just everything Zidane. about the way Zidane. he played bro yeah the touch the vision the just five moves ahead in, in, in his, <laughs> he in his wasn't head. really and i want to say Zidane, yeah. yeah because look he was untouchable anything he did was turning to benefit for the team mm. uh it looks so easy when you see him playing and surrounded by players the way he could get away from situation you know and it was decisive and no fear he yeah. just played his game uh every time he get fouled he just stand up and just play he doesn't speak he doesn't you know he doesn't waste energy and doing stupid things so. well that changed in the future <laughs> but <laughs> we'll get to that later <laughs> no you know i mean i totally understand zidane the way you're saying i mean <clears throat> most people say that um i remind them of a young zidane when i'm on the pitch so um i totally understand where you're coming from with it. <laughs> so when you went to arsenal mm-hmm. how did that come about what was arsenal i mean obviously it's not the arsenal of now so mm-hmm. it wouldn't have been your first choice now but was there any team before arsenal where you were like this is the team i want to play for when you've established yourself and you're like okay it's very clear now that i'm going to be a professional footballer is there any team that first that you would have really have wanted to sign to not really no. because uh i think back in the days arsenal was a french team from the yeah. premier league yeah. they had arsene wenger they had so many french players who were successful with the team already i had friends abu dhabi which I played with in in France who moved to Arsenal mm. uh and to me it was just a natural choice and I was very pleased and blessed to be able to to sign for the club mm. I didn't realize first because it goes so fast and with the pressure and the transfer you don't realize when they first approached me I think they saw me in uh, the European 20 under 21 cup in Portugal 2006 uh we reached semi final and i had a great tournament you know and uh i think they came for 38 games the following season with oxa yeah they came to watch 38 games 38 games different people also it's quite funny that i said to you in the makeup room 38 shirts remember yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah it's, it's yeah. crazy but yeah. now they don't focus only on the football aspect yeah they want to make sure the players are going to sign is normal Yeah. You know, it's not crazy, not possible, not, you know, stable. You mean then? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, not now, bro. One coach used to one coach, Charles Batik, mm-hmm. I think he's coaching Angers now. He came to me, he said, "Look, Arsenal called. They asked if you had a girlfriend, they asked if you go out, if you drink alcohol, if you smoke." And I was like, "Really?" So yes, and I don't do all of that. Yeah, so, so you're like alhamdulillah salam alaykum. Assalamu alaykum and bakari. It's a pleasure I'm to meet you. Look, Let uh, to tell them I'll come back. I'm just going to the mosque to just finish my prayers and then I'll come and ask some questions. I just say look, tell them I'm perfect. Yeah, so, yeah. But in some time they they were pushing and Oxa didn't want to let me go. So I had to show a bit of character and say look, this is my life. We're talking about Arsenal and this is my my luck. Mm. So please let me go and the end that let me go but from one weekend they told me okay you can go Arsenal and I'll have your medical. So I just packed two luggage and now I, I just went. So perfect season during my first season because the way the welcome I had was very very nice. Mm. I knew Gal Clichy because I played with him in national team at 21. Uh it was a French team. in England. Mm. That made my life easier because my English was okay mm. from school. Uh I had a Debayo French speaking guy, I had Colo Touré, William Galas. And before I moved to Arsenal actually, I I got called with national team also in France. Oh, okay. So I was not lost. So I didn't really need time to adapt to Premier League. I just played. Just I hit didn't the have running. any yes. I didn't have any pressure or because I felt home already and everyone was so friendly in the club and yeah you know Arsenal is here yeah yeah well take me back to that <clears throat> I want to understand the feeling that you had what was the young Bakari thinking when when you got that message and you were like by the way Arsenal wants you what was your initial I still had 10 games to go yeah. five five games five to 10 games to go so yeah. every single game I was thinking oh, what about if I play bad and they reserve the yeah, reverse yeah. the choice 
And I remember I played well all season, but that one game against Lorient, we lost. Mm. And I think I made a mistake. And I was like, that's it. It's done. Yeah, it's done. <laughs> you know? So I spoke to my, my, my agent back in the days and he said to me, look, don't worry. It's one out it of It won't 30. change anything. Yeah, yeah. But make sure you're good the next one. <laughs> 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 no, no. It was, uh, you know, the very nice. Very nice. And I was lucky because I had Pat Price, which mm. was a big legend from the club, right back. And he was on my back every single day. He made sure I was really on people when I was defending and he was sure I was not just passes. You mm. know, I realized after that, because at some point I had some talk, especially my, my second season, after I got injured, uh, where I was a bit passive, maybe. And I was not really active defensive. Mm. I was not aggressive enough, but you don't see it yourself. Mm. So a few times he said to me, look, maybe you should try to get the ball before you used to get the ball. But you know, I had a trauma in my head and maybe I didn't realize. Yeah, that's what I wanted to ask you because you had two leg breaks, mm. right? How do you get yourself back after something like that? What do, I mean, as a player, because look, your legs are your they're your money, dude. They're like the most important. You could have broken anything else yeah. and you would have been fine. You could have been running around the pitch like that <laughs> and you still would have been fine. You know, you have the other hand, but when you break a leg and the healing and the recovery and the, oh, sh now my spot is open kind of thing, right? Does that play anything mentally that you're thinking? You know, the, you know the first time is you take things as it comes. You know, I was blessed enough to be able to sign and have a, a positive progression. But you have to accept the bad side of it, you know. So um, I was upset against myself because that was a challenge I should have avoided. Mm. I jumped for the head while I knew the guy was coming to me and didn't really play the ball. And then while, when I landed back, I landed on my leg. My foot was open on the ground and I started rolling and my head, my leg hit the, the side of it. It was in Tottenham. Mm. Which made it even worse, even worse because yeah, people yeah. Were, were starting yeah, nothing yeah. around me. But I, I had the feeling my leg was on the side. Yeah. You know, it's like weird feeling. But yeah. I checked my leg directly and I saw it was straight. <laughs> you literally checked your leg like behind you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Why my toe? Why my <laughs> yeah, yeah. So when I saw my leg was straight, yeah. I was fine. But I had the feeling from half that part was sideways. That's the feeling I had. Yeah. So I knew something was wrong, obviously. I went back to the dressing room, took me to hospital, and then they told me, you, you broke your leg. You need uh, surgery. Yeah. So I was okay. I was okay. I was making sure my family was okay because I was okay. You know, I, yeah. I'm, I'm ready to take any stick in my life. But I was more worried about my parents and my family because I knew they were going to be down and I had to make sure to come back mm -hmm. and maybe to get some time away from football or so to focus on my family and uh that's what i did and how much when you come back like in those beginning games are you like you're running for the ball and you're like no no, no after you sir <laughs> because you don't want that leg break again right so no. you're just like okay you can go this time i'm not coming into that you know, challenge you know? uh, i came back not long after coming back on the pitch hmm. um i didn't even play with the reserve team i was wow. training on my own with uh, Tony Corbett, the fitness coach. And one day, I think we had we had problems in the team, some injuries, and we were playing. I think we, l we played on Wednesday against Man, Man United. We lost 2-0, mm -hmm. no right backs. And Thursday morning, at <laughs> I come training, I start running and I see the fitness coach on the highest pace, you know? Yeah. And I'm thinking, why is he speeding? It's just warm up, so what's wrong? Yeah. And then I see Arsene Wenger coming, I see his assistant coming and watching training. But I'm alone here, yeah, you yeah, know? Yeah, I was yeah. like, oh, I said, Tony, what's wrong here? Tell me. Yeah. And he goes like, no, I think you're ready. I said, what are you talking about? Yes, I think you're ready to play and you don't have to play with Joseph Damon. I said, Tony, did you, did you lose it? Because two yeah. days ago you told me yeah, yeah. <laughs> I need reserve and process. And <laughs> yeah. And he goes like, no, so you know, sometimes with the first team. <laughs> when it benefits them, right? It's not just like, challenging. Yeah, we just checked that everything's fine, man. Yeah. Fine. It's fine. You're good to go, bro. You're good to go. <laughs> and I just listened to them. And when wow. we played, uh, we played Bolton. And I think I played full game, 90 minutes straight. So it was good to me to go back 
But I had a setback because uh, Tuesday we played AC Milan away and we lost 4-0. And during the game, I understood during the halftime that Arsene Wenger was not happy about my mm. commitment, mm. you know, because, you know, he, maybe he was expecting me to be aggressive directly. I had just a trauma, you know, and, mm. and uh, I, I made sure the, the second leg uh, I played well yeah. and we, we nearly came back because we won 3-0 at home. Yeah, yeah, I remember. And yeah. Uh, yeah, crazy, crazy time. But you say that, but, you know, Arsene is, is quoted to, to once describing you as the best right back in the Premier League. How do you feel about that statement? Coming from him is uh, it's an honor because you know he represents so much not only for football but for Arsenal Football Club and even for myself. You know he always backed me up even when I had setbacks. He was always here making sure I was okay. When I lost my brother, he made sure I was okay and I made a few mistakes and he never gave up on me. He never turned his back to me and I owe me I owe him a lot. I mm. think in my life, in my career, and even with national team, he used to to command the national team. He used to see how hard was the criticism towards me in national team because they were not mm. easy with me. Mm. But the next day, he was always coming to me. Why is it so harsh with you? Mm. I think you played okay. You know? Yeah, but he I always mean, had a good word for me. And um, if he said it, I think at some point I was, I was there. Mm. And something crazy I never told anyone. <laughs> Exclusive. <laughs> you know, when I first got injured, I received a letter from Real Madrid. Wow. Yeah. I received a letter. Um, it was a nice word from uh, the president. I forgot his name. Just, uh, we're sorry to hear that you got injured and we wish you well and making sure you, you're coming back stronger. And I was like, whoa. You know? Was there a little small print at the bottom? And psst, by the way, if you do want to come over to Spain, <laughs> I know your Spanish is really good, so you can come over no, here. No. Don't tell anyone. <laughs> no, it was very respectful. Yeah, yeah. I think it was not. It was just a, a warm message. Mm. You know, I had one from them. I had one from from Lyon also, who wanted me before I moved to Arsenal. It was mm. just respect, mm. respect things. You know, you want to see in football. And, uh, and yeah, they were, they didn't try anything. They were very respectful, but you know, I felt like, oh. Yeah, when, when these guys are sending yeah. me messages, you're like, I'm doing something right. Mm. I kept the letter. Yeah. You know? Nice. I kept the letter at home and it's crazy. I told my son the other day, he was like, no way. <laughs> Send me a picture now. I'm going to post it with this clip. <laughs> Just like next to it with the letter. Yeah, that's crazy. How, how important was it for you that, uh, that Arsene was there? because obviously he's French, um, mm -hmm. but his coaching style is, I mean, I was speaking to Mikael on his episode and I, when I asked him, you know, who's the best uh, coach you've ever been with or the best manager, he he was saying that Arsene's style of coaching was his favorite, like he was the best the way oh, he... You know, he, I think he was the best for me also, as a, not only as a player, but as a person. Mm -hmm. He used to respect us a lot. Every morning he was in the dressing room and shaking hands, having words with us, not only about football, but about general stuff. Mm. And he used to take off the pressure for every single player. You know how many times we, especially the first year, we start playing and we are one and done and we won because he's, he transmitted the trust he had in us. You know how many times we reverse situation mm. because he was backing us up? It's crazy. At half time? Know? Yeah. But these halftime talks, were they Alex or Alex Ferguson type halftime no. talks where they were throwing something in your head or showing love? Or was it really kind of like, yeah, it was showing love and we were all young. Yeah. I think he understood every one of us. Yeah. He tried to take the, the best out of, of us and he knew we needed love because mm. we we're still young. We we're not ready to get to take the stick and take harsh yeah, words. Yeah. You yeah, know? yeah. Man United was different. Yeah, they yeah. were young, they were older, and they were already playing for national team regular. Mm -hmm. And uh, it, it was just uh, different. 
Yeah, I you can know? imagine him doing a more of a father figure thing, you know, and like reverse psychology, <coughs> you yeah, know, the talks exactly. where he's like, look, uh, my boys, if this is what you want for yourself, then that's fine. I will have to stand. And you're just like, this isn't what we want for us. <laughs> you're right. We're going to go out there and do it. <laughs> no, it was yeah. always positive and honest. Yeah. When we lost, he always tried to analyze. Maybe we're not this. We're mm. not that. Maybe we're not confident enough to play because you have quality. You always reminded us. How many qualities we had as a player, mm -hmm. you know? And uh, that's really important. Yeah, it's crazy, especially the first year when I was like, <laughs> we we're one and done, winning two one, one zero, winning two one, mm. two zero, winning three two, and I was like, Come we backs. cannot lose any game. Yeah, yeah. That's where we were first until March, because we had at least ten games where we should have lost the game. Yeah, but the way he spoke in a positive way was like, no. We are going to win that game. I think Arsenal was one of the only teams. I think maybe now Liverpool did it, but that never lost a game in the season. The unbeatens. The whole season and didn't yeah. beat. Yeah. Didn't I, was, one I game. wasn't there. Yeah. <laughs> but that's an incredible. Uh, it's crazy. Yes. Yeah. Honestly, it's impossible. How? Well, you didn't have me on the team, so you didn't understand the, <laughs> <coughs> the you know, that yeah, right? Number 10. Young Zizou, Young Zizou, sentiment field, <laughs> left or right, anywhere you want, it's not a problem. So you very highly rate uh, Jaden Sancho. Yeah. Why? Because I've seen him play and he was destroying whoever was facing him. What about um, him made you really, like really stood out to you that you were like, 16. hold on, there's something about this boy that's... Uh, he used to train with us, you know... My first year at City, I didn't really play as much mm. as I did with Arsenal. Mm. So the days after the game, I was training. And uh, obviously, you need some young player to train with us and complete. And when I saw the confidence he had, like, I was like, Ooh, that kid is mm. different, you know? He used to take the ball and dribble. Duck, 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 duck. Usually, the young kids who comes, they're very shy. Yeah, yeah. They do something and they pass the ball. He had a great personality. And he was overconfident. Mm. And anything he did, technically, was already high level. He just needed to arrange few stuff and be more decisive. Mm. But I knew he was going to be top. Just a few tweaks in the mm -hmm. in the system and he would have been perfect to go. I sent him on the other side. I said, look, you come to me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right? No, honestly, it was, it was different. And I was surprised when I saw... Um, and I saw he left Man City. Yeah, but you, because you tried to get him to Paris Saint Germain as well, didn't you? Uh, I told my friend. Yeah. He's like, uh, can I say this now? <laughs> no, before he went yeah. to, I knew he was leaving. Yeah. So I told my friend, look, you have an amazing player. He's going to leave Man City. Mm -hmm. You should have an eye on him because he's going to be a superstar. And he told me who? I said, Jaden Sancho. He was, and he is. An amazing player. I'm not sure he's fully happy in Manchester because mm. Manchester style doesn't suit him. Mm. He needs to stay away from the ball, get the ball and have one-on-one -on -one situation mm. only. He will be destroying players. Who do you think would suit him now? Which team? Man City. <laughs> <laughs> the irony in it, right? No, I, uh, I, I, I truly believe Man City and he will be a great addition for Man City. Yeah. Because every time he will get the ball, he will be in good position. Especially now with the players <laughs> around, boy, that's a dangerous you know, combination. He'll be, he'll be uh, isolated on the side, get the ball, and he can run with space. He's fast, he's powerful, he's skillful, and he can score. So, honestly, it's uh, it's sad to see him on the bench. Yeah. Because to me, to me, he can be one of the greatest. Yeah. Honestly, if he keeps working hard, if he keep believing in himself and don't care about the the press because it's quite difficult when you're young to take mm. the, the criticism and uh, you need to to keep confident that i would say that the most difficult thing in football especially the english press i mean the english press is just ridiculous like it's i mean the french press is no better don't get me wrong the way the french uh, the politics well, we will talk about that later but the english press is just like and it's so kind of like fickle one day Hey, everything's great. One day you're the, king, next day, the next yeah. day, you useless. Yeah, you know, but it's part of the job, mm. and you have to deal with it because now this mm. is what it takes mm. to to come to the top. And I'm sure Cristiano Ronaldo got got yeah. some stick. 
Yeah. He's still up there. Messi got them sick. But I think Cristiano and Messi are a bit different because they're <clears throat> they're entities in their own right, right? So they kind of uh, they're brands. So they boost them a lot more than than yeah, but than they should. Uh, to me, yeah. When I see Jaden Sancho, I see Cristiano Ronaldo. Really? Yeah. And But do you think no. he's got the whole package like Cristiano? He does. But I mean, off the pitch as well. Because that's a, a, one of the main reasons why Cristiano is who he is, is because of the off the pitch presence, right? I'm not sure off the pitch. Yeah. Because Ronaldo is Ronaldo, you know, his confidence and he's, he brings, he really brings something to the team. Yeah. Jadon is still a bit, a bit shy. Yeah. You know, he's still the new guy. And of course, he played great games with national team in Dortmund. But Dortmund is not yeah. United. You know, the impact yeah. United had back in the days was crazy. And he was surrounded with amazing players too. But he still plays his own football, you know. And for sure, Jadon Sancho will, will will get there one yeah, day. Yeah, he's, he's still got a lot of time. Yeah. <clears throat> still got a lot of time. Who, was there anyone that particularly worried you <clears throat> before games from the opposite team? Where you were like, ah. Oh, this guy's going to be on my case today or it happened a few games where you were just like okay this guy <laughs> i got you this time i got you i never got worried about anyone but i knew some players required more attention gareth bell is but he really as fast as people say that he is go on youtube you're gonna be <laughs> <laughs> you're gonna see me fall <laughs> running <behind him. laughs> i was running behind him yeah, yeah, i hit right. his hill yeah. and i was like yeah yeah you know <laughs> But he's, he's fast, super, fast. Oof, he's super fast because he doesn't look particularly fast it's like a tgb right yeah French TGB. he runs he's powerful and first steps is gone yeah and he can he, he can keep the pace for a long he's very powerful or maybe i'm slow <laughs> <laughs> yeah i don't know i don't know what's going on with that maybe maybe you, know, no. you have to rewatch after the leg break maybe the yeah. the speed went down but no. i mean gareth bell is the main one gareth or bell. there's no one that who would you say had the biggest presence Like, you know, because some people, like, they're so big, they're kind of like, okay, I, I, I don't want to say this, but you bigger know, than the game, if you know you what know, I mean. Like like Messi, for example. Surely more, when Messi comes on the pitch before a game, people are like, okay, I need to no, make sure I he was, doesn't have his day-to-day. -day. I was pleased to play against Messi. Yeah? It's, I took it like a challenge. That's what I mean. Are you yeah. kind of like, today is not going to be your day? No, it's yeah. like, okay, come. Yeah. Come and see. I'll see if I'm a good defender or not today. Yeah. Because he's the best one, you know. And how are you? Were you a good defender that game? <laughs> well, put me on the floor. Put on the <laughs> <laughs> I, I remember. I'm not, I'm not bringing it up. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. I remember. No, Neymar. Neymar. Neymar is dangerous. He's when light. he's not ice skating. Well. Neymar, you mean when he's not performing ballet? No. You know, everyone gave him a stick. He gets bullied. He does purposely get but on the pitch as well. People, I think... They bully him a bit. He's a pitch. special player. Yeah. I respect him so much. I played against him. He's an amazing player. Mm. And he's so light. He can change direction when he wants. But every time he gets the ball now, it's not one. It's two players looking after him. Yeah, but see, you have to say that because you come from that respectful football world of players where you have to kind of be like, but me, I can name us. Stop diving, bro. <laughs> stop diving, bro. <laughs> you can do so much more. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, I think English football is a bit better. I mean, when me and Mikhail were talking about when he first went to, to Italy, mm. I mean, Italian football is... It's different, tactical. It's, uh, it's swimming. It's not... Uh, for, it's tactical. Yeah. The slow... It's a pace. Slow. But the diving, bro. Like... Uh, Italian? Yeah. I played in Italy. And uh, you didn't think the diving was... Uh, no. Huh? And you know... What, what, what year did you play in Italy? 2007, 2018. Oh, okay, sorry. that's a different Italy. That I'm talking about... Uh, that I mean, the... Football Italia times, mm. like most of the time, you could leave, you know, the the room when you're watching TV and come back with full dinner, and the guy still hasn't got up off the floor. <laughs> you know, it's just like there was no, a lot of diving in Italy. It's just a, a lot of the. Hey. You know, <laughs> it's just, a, I think it comes from the ground, the way yeah. you, you start playing, the way you grew up, and and I think the way you teach, mm. someone teaches football to be smart. Because sometimes, yeah, you have to be smart and earn time. And it's not only on the pitch, it's a full package, mm. you know. Sometimes, and I watch some games. And recently I was in I was in Libya and I was watching uh, Libya against Egypt. And one of the um, Libyan players got injured, I think. He just came out walking. 
and let his teammates at 10 against 11. As in, he they didn't get subbed? No. He just... <laughs> Egypt played and Egypt scored at that time. <laughs> and he was like, inshallah, inshallah, bakra, I'm done. I'm done. Khalas, khalas, I'm done. You guys sorted yeah. out. Yeah, wow. And I was like, oh my God. They just considered the goal because he didn't say on the ground. So you see, you see the impact yeah, yeah. of it? Yeah. And the guy who scored was a, the guy he should have been marking also. So I was oh, I was wow. upset for Libya. Yeah. Because I was thinking that's a schoolboy mistake. You yeah, know? yeah, yeah. Were you using your Arabic? La 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 Haram, la 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 So why did you leave Arsenal? Do you regret leaving Arsenal? I don't have any regrets. I think I had my time in Arsenal. I really enjoyed that. There's a smile on your face where the, the, you're not giving me the full story here. Uh, no, no. Let's no. talk. Listen, I'm here Parlez to talk. Parlez avec openly. moi. <laughs> si, come on. Let's do this. Uh, the truth, the whole truth and nothing but the truth. No, listen. Yeah. I uh, I truly enjoy Arsenal. But I explained before, at some point I got disappointed because I didn't really have the feeling. Yes, yeah, they loved me. But at some point you have to make me feel really wanted. Mm. And at some point, you know, uh, especially when Van Persie left, Alex Song left, Kleshi left. <laughs> You're like, hey, this team's not French anymore. I don't want to be here. <laughs> no, it's, uh, I felt like, okay, I'm here, but what, what's next for me? Yeah. And they didn't come to me to ask me to renew contract one year before the end of my contract. And I was like, something's not right here. Well, if you think you're important for a club, they don't come. Yeah. At some point, you feel insecure. And I remember starting some game upset because I was thinking, why would they love me but not want me? Mm. In a way that come to me one year before the end of my contract, after respecting my contract for six years, mm. didn't ask anything, you know? Say something, right? Either say no or say yes, or but at least come and say something. Well, from what they were saying, I oh, we wanted to stay. Yeah. But they came too late. At some yeah. point, I got upset and I made up my mind. I was thinking, okay, I was used for seven years. I stayed six years on the same contract. Today, you're not going to find one player on the same contract for six mm. years. Every player will go and complain for two yeah. years. Manager will go and say, look, agent. So I was like, no. I believed if I was performing well, they would come to me. They didn't come. Or when they came, it was too late. I had two months and I was free agent. So to me, I made up my mind, and if I made up my mind, you can come. Whatever you, you want to offer me, no. It's not about the money, or as people say, it, I left, oh, he left for the money. So when I was there for six years, yeah, on yeah. same contract, I didn't hear yeah, yeah. But when I left for Man City, oh, you snake, you left for money. What yeah, is, yeah. You know? And I got disappointed also. And it's always that, that guy who can't fit into a football shirt saying that, right? Just like sitting there at the pub, oh, you snake and you don't do this. And it's like, I knew you, bro. No. <laughs> what are I, you saying? I know they were disappointed to yeah. see me go, especially yeah. for City because... To yeah, let's talk about that. Where did City come into the play? They made a relation. No, it's... Well, I was... I think I was still good. Yeah. But I mean, is City something you wanted? Or did you say, yeah. go get me City? No. Or did City just come? And... No, they came. I had a few clubs. Which were? Uh, let's bring them out there. Let's bring them out. Let's put it on the table. I help you on that one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, uh, Inter Milan. Okay. Uh, Liverpool. Paris. Came in summertime. Napoli. I had the choice. I'm not trying off. I, yeah, yeah. I really had the choice. But to me, I needed to challenge myself because City was already done. Champion. Mm -hmm. You had one of the best players of the world. So I was thinking, okay, this is where I want to go because it's different. It's, I'm out of comfort zone and I'll be facing, fighting the spot with Zabaleta, which mm -hmm. is someone big. Yeah. He was a vice vice, vice uh, captain. And I went. But first year I went there, it was different from what I expected. Yeah. You know? I You're was like, thinking, hold on a minute, this is not what I signed up for. No, you know, it's CT is different. It's yeah, to go from central London to, to Manchester as well. That's a I whole struggled. different world. I struggled the first year because it's a totally different world. Even understanding the, the people, the accent, the <laughs> Mancunian accent is very strong. I had to focus. Yeah, yeah. And the weather was different. The commitment of players was different. Um, you only had big players. Mm. They were just champions. So you know how it is. The year after being champion, you could feel some tension because some players needed to play and they wanted to play more. 
So my first year, I didn't really play much. I used to play big games. Hmm. I played Bayern, I played uh, Barca, I played Chelsea, I played, but the the games I wanted to play where I could have the ball more and hmm. attack more, I didn't play. So I was playing and sometimes the coach was coming to me all oh, very good. And then for one month, I will be on the bench. And I was like, oh, okay. wow, what's happening here? Yeah. Yeah. But I kept the smile, I kept positive, and I kept training 100%. And you were also just like counting the catcher, like, I don't understand why, I don't understand why I'm not going on the pitch, coach. Like, can you pass me that bag, please? We need to play, bro. I need to yeah. play here just like, like yeah. 50s flying out of every pocket. Like, this is no, not good, bro. This is not, not at all. Not no, at but all. obviously, for a footballer, like, no matter what the money is, you're, you're, the game is what you want. It's not deep inside. You know? I was upset. Yeah, you want to be on the pitch. It's like, okay, you pay me money, but like, what? And so many players have this problem where they go to a team and the team has so much money, they just want to buy the best. Mm. Either for, I'd rather him not be against us, so I'll just leave him there. Mm. No, you know no, no. I, mean? the, I think they, they counted on me. I want to be honest with myself. I was not the same player as Arsenal. Mm. But when I played Arsenal, I was playing against anyone. Mm. When I went to City, I was playing away with Bayern. I had Ribéry. Mm. Away with Azad. Ribéry's a machine, bro. Away with Chelsea, I had Azad. Away with Barca, Neymar and Messi. Yeah. So uh, I was supposed to attack. We didn't have the ball. Yeah, yeah. You know, and maybe they expected me to be more at offensive. Yeah. But you know, when you have I've Messi, got a, you have yeah, to I've got a job. I need to yes. stay back here, bro. <laughs> <laughs> and it's not a small job, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know. But eventually, I got my chance and I took it because the following yeah. year I went preseason, which I didn't have the first year because I came back from World Cup in Brazil. Yeah. So the first two weeks I stayed home. You know, from the beginning it was difficult. Mm. But I kept positive, I kept training hard. And when I really had my chance, the following season, I had pre-season, we went to Australia. Australia. We started the season in Wales, 3-0 against West Bromwich. Second game was Chelsea. We won 3-0. With national team, I was doing well. And I became the player they, they use the most. Mm. And then I went to Euro, amazing Euro. Unfortunately, we lost the final. Yep. Let's talk club or country. Club. Ooh. Okay. I mean, I understand why. Club, because it was like a family. Yeah. Not that I didn't like national team, but I had a strange relationship with national mm. team. Because I had the feeling to be part of national team, but I had the feeling that many people didn't want me to be part of national team mm. because the press was not easy with me. Mm. And I can tell you, I had three different coaches. Yeah. I always played, but they were always. Yeah. Who was the best national team coach that you had? Didier Deschamps. He was like was a great player as well. A bit like Arsene Wenger, you know. He yeah. made a group of players who could live together. And, and the beginning of it was World Cup. I was not playing, but the World Cup 2014, yeah. after I broke my leg, I came yeah. back and Debussy played. So he came to me, he said to me, look, why you were not here, Debussy played and he did well, so he's going to stay. Mm. And I respect that. He came to me, he explained. Mm. I said, no problem, coach. I stay there. If I had to come in for no, like... No, no problem, coach. <laughs> <laughs> no problem, I, I'm okay. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, no. Yeah, yeah. But <laughs> wait, let me remember what I was going to say. Did you ever consider playing for Senegal? Yeah, when yeah. I was young. But I told um, my dad, I kept telling, telling my dad, look, I want to play for your team in Senegal. Please yeah. contact them. Yeah. So he tried to contact them. He stayed on the line. For... <laughs> <laughs> she never came yeah. back. She yeah, never came back yeah, to yeah. me. But yeah, the thing is, the day they came back, yeah. I got called with the French national team under 21. Okay. And before you had a rule, you had to pick up. Yeah, one team and that's one, it. Yeah, before yeah. 21. Yeah. So I had basically, it was set 17 November 2014. 2014. 2000, 2005, I think, 2004. Mm. So I just had to make a choice. Do you feel like you get any hate from Senegalese people? Not at um, all. Oh, why are you playing for France and no, not playing for us? Or no. you think they understand and they just want to see you do well no matter where you are? I think some of them just maybe wonder why I didn't play for Senegal. 
but at the same time it was france mm. so they understood they understood i was born and raised in france so mm. to me it was a natural choice yeah yeah know? but i kept sending in my head and when they played i was making sure i could try and and watch a game and yeah. and i every time i was wearing the the french shirt it was a pride yeah. to have to be national to, yeah, yeah. to represent france but i was representing senegal in france you know yeah so it was a, a pride for me yeah i get it man i mean a lot of players you know like zizou mm-hmm. People are like, oh, he should have played for his real team and blah, blah, blah. And they're like, sometimes the level between the two teams is like, okay, come on. <laughs> like, at least if if it's one, then they're both kind of good. You can understand. No, but people have to understand also for us players, it's difficult because you have an African Nation Cup. Yeah. So you have to disappear from the club for yeah. two months, three months. It can be a stop for a player, for a club to, to take you. Yeah. And player and the clubs, they don't really like that. You know, they don't yeah. really like the fact that for two months, every two years, yeah. you'll disappear. Oh, 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 oh. Uncle city. is in the house. Hey, this, is my, this is my uncle. Uncle, uncle is in the house. Uncle. How are you? I'm good, I'm good. You? Ça va bien? Ça va, ça va et toi? Bonjour, comme Bonjour, ça va bien? Oui, ça va bien, merci et toi? <laughs> How are you? Very good, thank How's everything? You. Just break the headphones, break them, yes. break them, okay. break them. Turn the other way, huh? turn the other way. He's yeah, always, he's always, always on time. What's wrong always today? You know what? He was here from the beginning. I just had to pretend to you that he wasn't here, bro. Oh, you were hiding upstairs. Huh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good. Yes, yeah, yeah. At the back, you know, as usual. Look, this is uh, really impressive because <clears throat> for all the people watching, not many times would you get three world-class footballers on a podcast <laughs> together. <laughs> so where's, this, where's is tr- one? <laughs> this is this is a tr- this is a treat for everyone. Okay? <laughs> <laughs> How are you? I'm very good, thank you. It's so good that you're both here right now because I have a question that I really want to hear both sides of the story. Mm-hmm. Let's talk 2010. Let's talk. That's for let's, you. Let's talk 2010. Right. Okay. Because I want to I want an opinion from inside the club, the country, well. and from you watching from the outside what you were thinking, you know, seeing it and what your views were. Let's talk about it. Where, where where do we start? Do we start with Nico or do we start with uh, anything you want? I'm uh, you tell me. You're the one, bro. <laughs> you're, you're the one. Tell me. No, where, where did everything go wrong? Bro? It's. Uh, I think it was a global problem. Okay. Not only during the World Cup. I think all problems started probably after the games against Ireland. We could face the tension. The way we qualified, we became the enemy. If you think about ethic of football mm. we were the team qualified but we shouldn't be qualified we cheated mm. and you know we felt the pressure directly the french press was not easy with us mm. so they, were they got tra- very personal as well didn't they the press <sighs> they targeted people yeah and as a team you don't want that because when you're part of the team you stick with the team you want to protect each other and he's the first one to say when you do something you do it as a team no matter what, you support your, your teammates. Mm. Even if he's wrong, you support them at the time. And then later you go and speak to him and be like, hey, dude, this was uh, maybe not the right decision. You can always yeah. sort things yeah. out lucky. Mm. And every single club is doing it today. Yeah. But with France, obviously things got bigger and we didn't realize we were in a bubble. And I want to say today, if I had to do it again for my teammates, I would do it again. Let's talk about it and what it was. Just a, a normal burst. Not, uh, it's not even a burst up, you know. It's just a remark, a, yeah. adjustment. Yeah. During the during the half time, but since got out of context in a speed way, and and it became big before we even realized. But we didn't accept the fact that the press came out so aggressive. Mm. Because it shouldn't happen. We are in France. We're not in. Okay, people are used to it in in England. Mm. See big stories in front in in the sun, and people are used mm. to it in France. No, mm. you don't see that. And as a player, I was shocked to see the press from the Cape. I was like, "What's wrong with them? Mm. Why would you do that against your own national team?" So yeah. we all got upset, and we stick to each other. But this it. is when Nico got sent sent back, right? This is where it all kind of stemmed from the main thing, right? The if something happened during halftime, uh, Beckham when he was in yeah, yeah. in Manchester, he received a boot. Yeah, yeah. 
No one found out directly. Yeah, but nobody really knows that it was Mikhail who threw the boot. Everyone, <laughs> thinks it, everyone thinks it was Alex, but it was actually him. No, but they're yeah, protecting yeah. the story. Yeah, they yeah. stick to each other. Yeah, they yeah. dealt with it. With Loki. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So why would you do that? It's a World Cup. You need yeah. to send a positive image. Uh, we don't like gossip in France. Yeah. We don't like big stories. And on top of it, we start 23. We finish 23. Hmm. But... The fact that he was with us and next day we we're hearing he'll be he'll be going away. No. Mm. Yeah, the thing that happened is that you have to realize that L'Equipe is like the the Times magazine, you know? Mm. So the front page was like a little bit, yeah. Thought this way, go. The yeah. front page was like Nico talking. Shut your mouth, you yeah, motherfucker. Yeah. yeah so it's big yeah it's massive yeah, it's yeah. very aggressive Everyone but nico is well known to be quite a polite right he's straightforward if, yeah if he doesn't like something he will just say but he's normal but he's not a troublemaker like he's not a general troublemaker in the in the team right or no 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 he's not yeah. he's not he's got uh, a very strong mind mm. but he's not a troublemaker that's he for sure true to himself yeah and what and what did I mean, whose idea? Okay, you're not going to answer this. Whose idea was it to go on strike? All of us. Okay, very cute answer. No, all of <laughs> very us. Very cute all answer. Of us, all of us. <coughs> Listen, look, we are not an organism that no, all says the same look, word at some time. Somebody look. went. Hey, no, mon ami. Bien ici. Listen, we decided. Think, we okay. decided yeah. to try and protect him in a way because yeah. we couldn't. Just we, stand by your guys, right? Yes. Mm. And we decided we need to do something for him because it's not fair. Why should it be him? Every time it's Nico. Mm. Something happens, Nico. Every time he doesn't like something, he will speak on behalf of the group. But he will be targeted. Mm. And it's not fair because he was trying to defend us also. So the less we could do is to try and defend him now because mm. he probably needed our support. And if I had to do it again, I would do it again for him. Thanks for answering my next question. <laughs> I was so, going to say so to, today, 10 years later, you would do it again. Because listen, I'm in San Bart enjoying my holidays and I see this drama on TV and I'm like, what the hell are they doing? Yeah. Are they thinking straight? The entire world is watching us. We are one of the favorite teams, you know, but, yeah. and we are in front of the media. So I'm like, what are they doing? But yeah. I'm not in the bus, you know, I'm not yeah, with yeah. them. I understand no, the feeling. Listen, 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 we didn't decide not to play the game. Yeah. Not, not to train. We decided yeah. not to train and show yeah. support for one training session only. Yeah. It was a light one. Okay. Okay. Next day, we were ready to train. Mm. But th that day, they put it blew was, it all out of proportion. No, huh? it was an open training session uh, yeah. and people traveled two hours, three hours. Oh, wow. So we had to go and see these people and spend time take pictures yeah. this is the only reason we came down yeah but i think they knew we didn't want to train what would you have done well i wouldn't let the the national team coach take a paper and read it on behalf of the of the team that was a uh, from him yeah it was a very bad move and i think he didn't serve the the players right you know mm. it should have been one of the players going from the media and explaining exactly what's ha what was happening because having the coach which not a lot of people respected yeah. after 2008 disaster mm -hmm. didn't help the the players cause i understand what they tried to do mm -hmm. but it was it wasn't it wasn't disaster at the end of it but one of us was supposed to go and read it <laughs> oh <laughs> okay. Yeah, okay what happened it was nico and he was out <laughs> no, no, <laughs> like, yeah. just yeah. Took, took he the took the paper, paper and say look i will go and read it wow but look at the end of the day look we went down got the pictures okay yeah the easiest thing to do was to deal with it at the uh, hotel mm. you deal with it you agree on something done no story mm. we came down why do you have to come down and why all the drama has to be in front of all the press mm. we stayed 45 minutes down why yeah we, we wanted to leave but we couldn't leave because driver was not here so why would you do the drama in front of the world yeah when you have the hotel it doesn't make sense it's just adding wood to the fire dude this is where you needed people well, like me i would have been like guys this is bullshit Allez, let's go <laughs> back onto no, the bed. but we wanted to go yeah. but you can't you right know, none of us could ride yeah, yeah, the bus yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know yeah 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 but the problem is 
then we had to hide like we were hostage and horrible <coughs> feeling horrible feeling but mm. so, still i was thinking about nico frank didn't want to drive the bus once more like he did with Bayern Munich. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Frankie. No, no, no. <laughs> and crash it. No. <laughs> and yeah. it's sad. It's sad because at the end of the day, I think we were just trying to send a message away to protect him yeah. and make everyone understand we are a team. It's not only him. We lost mm. against Mexico. It's because of the team. It's not Nico. But there was a thing at that time where the press were very much like, this is not a team. This is, you know however many individual playboy players bling bling kind of thing right that, around the french national team at that point and one thing i wanted to kind of ask you guys was um so you know benzema said it best when i score i'm french when i don't i'm an arab you know and then you have laurent blanc making comments like we have to look at the numbers there's way too many africans and north africans in the team and stuff like that how do you feel and how do you deal with a statement like that Good questions. Huh? So we're going to get some good yeah, stuff, let, some juice. Let me, let me think about it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Right no, away. Three, two, one, go. <laughs> <laughs> Look, what do you want to say? No, I want, I want the truth, bro. Look, you don't have to play anymore. It's fine. You can say everything, bro. No, <laughs> You're not going back. No, I know. I know. But it's... You're you know. protected by Dubai. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah. it's... it's the First of all, you don't understand. Yeah. Sometimes you don't understand command. You're just shocked, speechless. And then you think... Why? Mm. What was behind? What is the message behind it? And I wish I could have asked a question directly to, to the person who said things. Why? What do you mean behind mm. that? You know, I don't have to be on the podcast to, to, to attack people. Mm. If I had to say something, I had to, to say directly, you know. But why? Because we are all the same at the end of the mm -hmm. day. No matter black or big or mm. or Arabs or we all the same. We are mm. human beings, and we are all the same, defending the same cause, the same shirt. So it's a very saddening statement to make, like where you're just like, "Oh man, are we still here?" Like, uh, yeah, we are still here. Sadly, yeah, but yeah. I've read a good book uh, years ago. Everybody's black, yeah. but some some dudes have the the white skin. Mm. You know, it's. It's difficult. I'm yellow. You're not talking. About me. <laughs> You're not yeah, Arab. Arab. <laughs> <laughs> it's difficult. Yeah. It's difficult sometimes to understand comments. Even now, racism. You see them. Oh, yeah, monkey, monkey, monkey. Mm. What's, what is? It's bro. It's it's insane. And also, the England. What happened with England as well? Oh my days. You know, with the oh. three boys as well. I mean, I was watching that with my friends. I mean, I hate watching England. I grew up. England is 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 a mental breakdown for me. Watching them trying to because every year the media. They make you believe, bro. They make you believe this This one, we might just do it, you know? And they never do. Never. Uh, so I'm sorry. Yeah. Can you speak about your coach's choice to send the kids? Yeah, for sure. Is it normal? Are you asking me? Uh, yeah. I'm the... Welcome to the Jibber <laughs> with the Sanya show. <laughs> I'm, I'm the yeah. host. Yeah, it's nuts, bro. It's not normal yeah. for me. He's, he's 19 years old. Yeah. His first year playing regular for Arsenal. Not just that. Half of them, th was it all three of them didn't have a full game that game either. Yeah. Two of them did, just came off penalties. And I remember sitting with my friend and I remember going, I literally said, I said, you're putting three black kids to take these penalties. Thank you. I said, something can either go very right yeah. or very wrong. You don't need you experience know? to yeah. know what's yeah, going to yeah, happen yeah. next. And I was just like, please. And, I, and for me, it wasn't even about the game anymore. I was just thinking, guys, please score, please score. Not for the game just for what I what I could see was going to happen. Yeah. And I was like, oh, here we go. Here but we why, go. Why would you send kids? No, but it was like, you know, some some experienced player chickened out. And yeah. probably they were like us sometimes when they penalty shoot out. Who wants to take? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm not here. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, but, but still, though, they should. I mean, they had someone like Grealish. He was, found the coach. he was ready to go. He's played the whole game. He's warm. He's and ready. He said after and he did you see? To take. Did you see how many times he just walked around like he, he was like you know that loser guy who tries to hang around the cool guy. He was just standing in front of the coach, making sure he sees him, and then he moves. So he moves in front of him, and he's just like, like like he's ready to go. Yeah. And then he just kept on turning, and I could I could see he wanted to take one. I was like, pick this guy. And then you got and again, this is the really funny thing about racism that I just don't understand. I just don't get this. You see people who are racist 
in England. I mean, I can't speak for other countries. Well, I can, but I'm not going to. Uh, they're racist, but a, gla a black guy will score and they'll run up to him, hug him and kiss his forehead. Now, either that's a testament to the game of football that it can make you forget that you're a racist <laughs> for the rest of your life. But like, where, where does the line cross there? Like, how come when he's doing well, you forget your racism? Yeah, and you'll literally hug him and kiss him and stuff like that. But then when he's not... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Allah Zahim, I'm eating, yeah. so. <laughs> the betting. Yeah. No, I mean, uh, Usman Dabo, our friend who, who played for Lazio, mm -hmm. the, the fans would say, oh yeah, he's playing for Lazio, so just wearing the, the shirt makes mm -hmm. him a, a white guy. We forget he's black. But a lot of them, I mean, some of the art fans, yeah. artcore fans are racist, fa fascist and racist at the same time. Personally, I wonder, I, I still wonder when the big organism will change something because the player themselves they have to stay away from this from the pitch mm. yeah there's got to be a kaepernick situation yeah. right because if they exceed the pitch there's no theory rights if mm. there is no theory rights there's no money and from the minute they will lose money they will move but the thing is it's it's it's, it's hard because Paris, what these people but, don't realize that look at look forget about football let's look at america mm. very racist country okay a lot of people will be like very racist country let's not kill anyone same thing. Look at all of their athletes. Most of their best athletes are either African or or African American or whatever. So but when they're in the Olympics, oh yes, or whatever and everything. And then if they don't win the race, it's just like, oh man, these black guys, we need to get more white people in the team. Like, Stay away then. Don't go. Yeah, I don't get it. I don't get it. I just don't understand it. If but you... some people don't think like that. The way they're raised, their surroundings and everything, I guess is is taught, right? Look. Paris was playing Champions League against uh, Bashak Okay, mm -hmm. everyone came out mm -hmm. of the pitch. You see the reaction the next day. They had to play the game, but they took some instructions against the referee. Wow, they moved, and everyone, the world was talking about that game because it just came out and they stick as human being, not only mm -hmm. players. So if you go to the stadium, you hear monkey noise. All teams, all players, they have to go out. Stop the game and go, yeah? Yeah. What do you think the league will do? Yeah. Eventually, they'll start. Because they'll get they little, money. little snipers that are just sitting there watching with little, like, <laughs> you know, like the, the beanbag guns. Anyone that does anything is going to get a beanbag to the face. <laughs> and they're knocked out for the rest of the game. And they just wake up. They're like, oh, the game's finished. He's like, yeah, you shouldn't have made the monkey noise. <laughs> no, yeah. but it's from the minute they will lose money, they will move. Yeah, money. Yeah, that's the thing. When when you start taking money from people's pockets, especially these guys and the, who control the stuff, they'll be like, oh, no, no, hold on a minute. I don't. I think racism should be addressed yeah. because the money's going there. Like, we should really face this uh, subject. It's really important. So like, yeah. And All then right. every beginning of season, we have uh, meetings. We cannot say this. We cannot say that. They tell us players, mm. it's racist to say, oh, you midget or... Mm -mm. So why are they allowed fans yeah, saying like things? You know, it's it doesn't make sense to me. It's it's a very difficult situation. Huh? Mm -hmm. I mean, it, unfortunately, it's the world that we live in, and it bleeds into everything. You know, into work, into into sports, into whatever. And I don't know. I just feel like now, now is a good time for countries to to liberate themselves from. You know, we have the whole cancel culture, and everything uh, is. You're not allowed to do this. You're not allowed to do that. Okay, use that, guys, and be like, yeah, get England out of all of these countries. Do you know what I mean? Get mm -hmm. these countries that have been ruling your other countries and, you know, a million miles away. Get your money back. Get your independence and get your... Because it's... Uh, where are we living in? A hundred years ago now? Mm -hmm. Like, why are we still accepting that this country is is Queen Elizabeth's country? Like, it's, what's Jamaica got to do with Queen Elizabeth? You know, it's, it's about time. You're like, no, 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 it's all right. Thanks. No, it's... It was fun while it lasted. Bye. It's very sad. It's very sad. You see, Kaepernick. Yeah. He lost it's his career. He lost everything. To protect people. Yeah. And you see how he got treated. It's sad. Yeah. And four years later, oh, maybe he was right. Yeah, yeah. But he lost four years of his life. But this is the thing. He was the brave one because he did it by himself. Yeah. And then, because it's a lot easier to take the knee when there's twenty other players doing it. Okay. Oh yeah, yeah. Let's take the knee, guys. But when it's the one guy. Who's standing his ground and been like, take the knee, and he's like, guys, no, just me. 
Okay. <laughs> Whatever. I'm going to do it. He's very, brave. very brave, man. He's very brave. To think Honestly. that first step. You have any uh, questions coming from a football point of view for a uh, football point of view, of course. Or well, not even um, football. No, no. What was your best moment in your career? Maybe you can pick more than one because sometimes it's difficult. You've when I met you, uncle. When I met you, <laughs> uncle. Why you call me uncle? Because uh, you're 72, bro. No, <laughs> no, it's not. you look great for your age. No, bro, it's it's yeah. my tonton, 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 tonton Mika. It's a mark of respect. Yeah. yeah. Toto. Yeah. No, um, I want to say European Cup 2016 in France. Because yeah. to me, playing in front of family in your own country, such a big competition, is it doesn't happen every day. Yeah, you know, and that was my the major competition I had to play because 2014 I didn't play. I was on the bench. I played my last competition in front of my family on the French ground, and we did well. Unfortunately, mm-hmm. <laughs> but still, still we had a I good mean, look, tournament, and you know the vibe we we could feel. This France back yeah. in the days was under pressure with Gilles Jaune, and, yeah. and the situation was economically difficult. Yeah. And I had the feeling we managed to bring some some peace, yeah, and happiness in France a bit. Yeah. Well, look at the end of the day, at least one of us won the World Cup. Yeah. You know? yeah. What, what did you win? Uh, the West London World Cup, West in, London uh, World Cup in Holland Park. <laughs> so we had the best eleven players from every every you know Chelsea and yeah. Uh, yeah. So but you say you see you you're talking first. about the the family and the the fact that they came to the stadium in front and it was good for you. So for me the family is great when they come and they see victory they see you lift the trophies. But I think for me the most important part of the family is when you are down, you've been losing games. Mm-hmm. And you had a shit day in the office. You come home, you can hug your kids, you hug your wife. Mm. And yeah, for yeah. me, this is also mm. the best moment because you can, you think about something else because otherwise it drives you crazy. Mm. I agree. You know how many times after the playing, having a bad game, I didn't want to come out of my house? Yeah. Of bed, even. People don't say that. Mm. They don't and see the other side of it, right? And mm. I think it's right. When you feel the support and kind of love yeah. when you need it, mm. it's important also because that's what gives you power to go training the next day and face looks, yeah. face criticism. And next day you have to be ready because two days later you have another game and you have to perform that one. Yeah. And it's really important to feel that support. And as, as Mika said, I think it's really important to be still Mm. Really playing, you know? Especially with children, bro. Ch- I mean, children are, mm. are the best thing ever, bro. Can I have a question for him? Yeah. <laughs> the one that we asked before? Okay. No, no, no. Okay. It's, uh, <laughs> no, I, I think he, he left very early, France, very early. So tell, mentally... Tell, tell him, don't tell me. <laughs> no, I think I'm very concerned about the mental side of the game. Yeah. Of the kids, especially. Yeah. And I know now for a fact that living home is very difficult. I did when I was 24, mm. but he did when he was 20. So mentally, how did you get ready to be part of the best team in the world at such a young age and feel and deal with the pressure? Maybe it will help us for kids. Yeah. Because some kids now having problem and they struggle mentally. So yeah, it, no, it's a, it's a very good question actually, because uh, now since I've started my own uh, talent management agency. What's it so, called? Talent Life. Quick shameless plug there. <laughs> no, talent there, life. there, there, Talent Life. So, <laughs> Ta- talent, talent Life. Keep talent going. Life. <laughs> now, one, one, of the, one of the key elements is especially working on the mental aspect. Mm. You know, not necessarily a psychologist, but more mental coach, sports, sports coach, you know. And I think it's important for the players at 16 when they face pressure, they don't know if they're going to get the next contract. You know, the apprentice contract or the pro contract, a lot of pressure from the family, from the entourage, and f- even on themselves, they put a lot of pressure. So I use that a lot. And for myself, I think the fact that I moved in uh, Milan with Usman Dabo, who was my best friend in, in Rennes, that helped a lot because we can look at each other and say, mm. I got your back, mm. you got my back. There was, there was other French players. Zumana Camara, Sebastian Frey. Mm. So it was like mm. the almost like the Arsenal. We felt at home. 
there was Andrea Pirlo, Cristiano Zanetti. So there were a few a few other young players. How did they see you as a young player? Did they welcome you well or? So look at this team, they just won the European uh, Cup. Ronaldo was there. Yuri Jerkaev came back from the World Cup, having won the trophy. Uh, Zamorano, Simeone, a lot of big personality, Chris, uh, Zanetti, Javier Zanetti, Canu, Taribo West, Recoba. Got some players. Huh? Right? <laughs> yeah. He said Ronaldo. Yeah, right. I was like, oh my God. Baggio, <laughs> two Ballon d'Or in my team. So I had to face them every day in training and playing with them was just special. And I felt welcome only because I showed my worth. Yeah. Because in this dressing room, if you don't show your worth on the pitch, there it's is over. no mercy. You're not the, you're not yeah, the best. It's over before it even starts. You need to be playing with, uh, yeah, yeah. you need to be adding value. So at 20, you need to respond and, and make sure you, you do your piece and you make the, the team better. You can't be the weakest link. Otherwise you're gonna. Especially being the young weaker link. Yeah. Like it's different being there and becoming a bit weaker after, after a while, mm -hmm. but joining there, you're just like, yeah, well, they're going to eat me alive if I don't. Yeah. 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 You so you play your game. Yeah. yeah you're strong. And if everything goes well, that's good for you. It was a bit harder for Usman because he didn't play as much. Yeah. Um, but we, we kept close to each other and, uh, we, we, yeah, we, we worked hard, so we made it eventually. But it was a test of character for sure, straight away, 20 year old. But again, I was already with my girlfriend and my wife. So it was, it was easy as well. On, Did you on, say your girlfriend and your side. wife? No, I said my girlfriend <laughs> then, now my wife. <laughs> <laughs> What are you trying to do there? <laughs> no, no, yeah, yeah. Yeah, no, it was, it was good. So I had a lot of support. Oops. And you speak Italian, uh, dai, shida, shida facciamo adesso. Si. So si, I'm taking si, over no, now. We, we do this, the... No, we speak Italian. Yeah, we do the show in Italian or si, just si, French? Yes, we speak in French, all in French. Or in Spanish, it's also good. It's 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 good. I mean, there's a very small similarity, a difference between Spanish, French and uh, Italian. It's good. It's good. It's good. It's good. It's un po un po un poquito <laughs> um one thing now that you mentioned that we had a conversation when we were sitting me you and Sev um and I didn't get to ask you that on the podcast but it, when you brought it up it was actually really interesting so we were talking about how life after football and how the the statistics of of players that get divorced and you know go bankrupt and, and lose a lot of money so I want to hear your views on that how do you guys prepare for that how do you Did you prepare for it? Was it something that that you're very aware of? And it's you and your destiny. Mm. You have some aspect after the your career you can you can control because at the end of the day it's you your choice and what you want to make of it. You know, mm. and I want to say thank you to him by the way because he came to me and. He advised me to work with someone, which is my financial advisor today. That was back in 2009. And many times I was thinking, look, if I didn't have the chance to have someone like him to guide me, how would be my situation today? Who would be working with me? Maybe I would have worked with someone not straight. Mm. And he doesn't know that. But many times I was thinking about him. Oh, my uncle <laughs> did well. You know, he protected me in the way. And today, this is what I'm trying to do with young kids. He doesn't know he helped me, but other, other players too. He wouldn't realize because he did it naturally. And that's yeah. why I respect him so much because he gave us feedback that helped him in his own life to help others. Through experience. You know, and today I'm still working with the same person. We met earlier and you said to me, oh, you still work with him? You know, he made sure like yeah. even years after yeah. that I was still stable, you know, and it's really important to give back and I cannot give back that advice, of course, but I'm very thankful. And uh, every time I was thinking, oh, my uncle saved me, <laughs> you know, it's getting emotional. Come on, guys, let's have a group hug. Come on. Especially when you're a player, it goes and so it's fast. Hard, it's hard because there's a not a lot of people take the time to worry about other people, you know, so, you know, big respect to Miguel for for pushing you in that direction. And no one take yeah. time for, yeah, especially yeah. for young. 
Yeah. No one, no one does it today. In football is a strange world. No one gives advice just for insurances. Mm. Stupid advice. And benefit them. What? How can it benefit me? Yeah. Like I know a guy. You should use him because I'll get a little cut off the, the money you're paying them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and and what's your opinion about it? No, for me it was just the right thing to do because I had a good feeling about that person. He was, again, another professional athlete. You know, mm. from tennis. And I thought he was doing a good job and I had a lot of trust and I felt like, yeah, I could uh, orientate him to toward these, these young players who need mm. advice and, and make sure they are being looked after properly. And you know, actually back when I was at Arsenal, after doing that with you, with Gael and some other players, I was like, you know what, I like it and maybe I'm going to start an agency. But obviously I was playing it and mm. so it wasn't, it wasn't the right thing to do or at least the right moment. But now, 10 years later, yeah. I'm, I'm doing it for real. And that's that's one of the satisfaction. If you're happy, customer happy, then... <laughs> See, indirectly, you inspired, know, you're inspired I will, I will, each I will, other. I will send him players. Yeah, yeah, right? <laughs> <Paying back my way. laughs> no, but to, to go back to yeah. your question, to prepare yourself for the second life. You see, second life. Second life. It's not, uh, it's not that easy because you're in uh, uh, beast mode. You go to training. You look after your family. It's very simple, right? It's like repetitive. You know what you're doing. Yeah, and it's, There's it's, no... it's difficult to, to prepare because you, you can't really project yourself for after. You know, mm. you can do a little bit of maybe, uh, okay, some finance, uh, some digital work, but you can't prepare yourself for what's next. And also, everybody's saying, yeah, I decided to stop, but really... Someone kicked you out. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Or someone yeah. sent you a, a stingy message. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, know, you have to admit Thanks it. Thanks for everything. Yeah. Ciao. Yeah. yeah. You say, "Oh, my body let me down. Yeah, I couldn't yeah. do so. I stopped." But the reality is, yeah, yeah. Every every doors are are locked. Yeah. <laughs> Phones are shut down. Nobody is <laughs> answering yeah. to you anymore. Mm -hmm. So that's it. You have to retire. And the day that happened, you're like, "Okay, now nah, what?" Yeah. <clears throat> but you're by yourself. You're home. Your wife is like, what are you doing here? <laughs> What's going on? She's like, there's a game on today. You know that. What were you yeah. doing at home? He's like, yeah, so we need to talk about that. Um, all those bracelets got to go. <laughs> like, <laughs> we need to recoup some money. Uh, what yeah. shit's cards? Yeah, you don't like that car anymore. But, <laughs> yeah. So there's going to be a period of time where you're going to be searching for yourself, searching for opportunities, look at what you should be doing, where mm. do you feel comfortable. So during that moment, you want to have enough resources to be able to actually find your way and find something that you really like. But some players, they have to jump onto coaching mm. or TV, you know, because they don't have the resources. Mm. They don't have that, that luxury. And mm. uh, a lot of them actually don't. And that's when everything collapse. The marriage, you lose your friends because you can't entertain anybody anymore. You can't take them to holidays, to nice restaurants like you used to do. So it's a difficult time because you're lost. And you're alone. Mentally, there is no more club, no more federation. There is no one around you. Mm -hmm. You need a strong foundation. Mentally, you have to be ready. Because mm. you're not the one everyone prays. You're not the one people are the yeah. open the door for, you know. It's you and what you did is the past. People forget, yeah. you know. Sometimes yeah, you can have a picture and you see people and with their kids, you know. Yes. Yeah, yeah. No. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, oh. Especially this new generation, right? Like oh. you, you walk in there and you're like, N nobody recognizes me, huh? Okay, I guess I'll just do my workout <laughs> just quietly. No, you have to always keep yeah. your feet on the ground and one day you start, but it will stop mm. in a nice way or different way. So you have to be really mentally for that. Mm. Why did you retire so early? I mean, I say so early, but do you feel like you can still play now? I could. I mean, apart from the new but, team that we're starting uh, now, the five-a-side team. I think we we had the same kind of uh, end. We played in the. You got that? You got a letter. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you got a letter, and you had the door close and lock. I uh, nearly a letter, a text message. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah a well, text message. Not even a letter. You know, no, <laughs> like no. yeah, a letter. You have to go and post it and take mm. time. You know. Personally, it was a text message coming back from holiday in Dubai, December two thousand nineteen. Yeah. I landed. I open my phone and <laughs> check my phone and I see <laughs> on behalf of the club, we want to thank you for the year and a half we spent together. <laughs> wow. <laughs> I was like, oh, I got kicked away yeah, from, yeah, yeah. Yeah. from this team. <laughs> yeah. And then I had two weeks of visa. Yeah. 
my family, my kids who go to school, I had offers in, in France and I was like, what do I do? Mm. It was six months plus eventually one year, but I have my family one side and my kids stability. Mm. So to me, the choice was done. Mm. And they get into the age now where you, okay, enough moving them around too much because school now they're starting to build friends and they're starting to have the community. It's and not just like Say goodbye to to Ralph. <laughs> you know, we're gonna go and meet uh, another guy. Let's go see John in another country. Like he's a new friend, new friend. He wasn't that cool anyway. Don't no, worry. It's, yeah, it's very. And we were talking about it today. I think he had the similar. Yeah, similar, similar, and in, in the MLS, yeah, yeah, tough one to take because I expected to stay at Portland Timbers. It was great, great organization. Great. We are friends over there. Friends for life. Great city. Yeah. Great um, state. And uh, lovely football. The crowd is amazing. Apart from the names Team, of the teams, bro. Timbers Army. The names are like ridiculous of the teams out there. No, the Timbers, <laughs> Portland Timbers is good. Yeah, well, what do you mean? What, what, like, it's the only country that has to overdo everything. Do you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like, every other team is called one name of the place they are or, or something like that. But it's got to be like Miami Avengers or something like that. <laughs> just, like, just call it Miami, bro. This is a Miami team and that's it. <laughs> like, they always have to do something. Like, you played for uh, Montreal. Uh, Montreal. Impact. It's like, oh, you take me seriously, bro. Like, <laughs> Impact. What is this? It's like a chewing gum name. No, bro. they change it now recently. Yeah. It's Club de Foot. Montreal. Oh, Club de Foot? Oh. It's all you French players that keep going there and just oh, teaching them French. Is. Okay, let's talk because um, there's something I want to talk about. <clears throat> let's talk the Arsenal of today, bro. That's for you. No, no, no. You, no, you can you, also you get you in play, there, bro. Wait, let Arsenal. me just get a nice Instagram video of this while we're talking because I don't want to miss anything. Let, let's go. <laughs> Yeah, they are in the top spots for Champions yeah, League. Yeah, they're going well, no? It's not an embarrassing question. Look, they're AJ, doing you've well. got to change your question. So they're telling me that they're trying to make Arsenal sound like it's really good now. It is, As it uh, is. Bakari and Mikhail. It's improving. Me. Look, they had how many clean sheets? How many victories? They won the last game also. So they're on a good way to come back to the top. You just, so when... See, this is the thing. You're just like, let me save this video because I don't want to lose you guys saying that Arsenal are good. I want to keep this with me. You just said they won the last no, game. No, but wait. From yeah, one game in like 25 years, bro. What are you no, talking about? Yeah, but from where they started at the beginning of the season, now they're good. Oof. Much better. I oof, mean, oof, oof. Beginning of the season? Tough. Oh, I thought you were like, oof, how good they are now. No, I was about to say, no. reverse that, oof. They have amazing players. They're starting in the table. Okay, let's talk the last five years. Because I can see you guys are trying to get out of this and I want to talk Arsenal, bro. Arsenal are not the team that you know, Arsenal you, were, bro. You know how it is when you have... You know when they had amazing players? They had Sang, they had, uh, you know, Henri, they had uh, Silvestre, they had... that. They were team... They, they were like... Uh. No, but it's the same as when you uh, when United lost Ar- uh, Sir Alex Ferguson. Mm-hmm. They lost Arsene Wenger. Yeah, that like... Was it. They lost collapsed. Arsene Wenger 50 years ago, bro. It's over now. Come no, on, move it wasn't. on. No, it's not like... Don't go. <laughs> It's not that long ago. Okay, how long was it? <laughs> long enough then... Uh, how long was it? Four years ago, no? Yeah. No, more than that. No. No. <laughs> no, it wasn't. Okay, AJ. four years. Yes. Four years. Yeah, it, of it, no it man's land. It takes time to rebuild. It you takes a lot of time. You shouldn't have got rid of Arsenal. But, but listen, okay, four years, yeah. but don't talk like, oh, they were doing amazing, and then Arsenal left, and then everything they went was, downhill. They were still managing to win Cups, FA Cups final. That's not nothing in England. Okay, but like... I know, I know. How are you going to compete same. with team spending? Look, at the end of the day, I'm a Man United fan, so you can yeah. see where this is all coming from. I, how do you want to compete? No, no, if yeah. you want to keep the stability of a club, and how you We're still repaying the Emirates for another 100 years. Yeah, yeah, right? <laughs> That's the excuse. You know? What, advice, what okay. advice would you give to to Arsenal supporters? Stay, be, stay with it. Uh, be patient. Be patient. Uh, yeah. Be patient. And it's hard to see the club in such a bad position because... Yeah. I mean, it must be because that's your stadium is nice. Yeah. It's in London. Uh, facilities, training facilities are nice. Yeah. They have everything to be. But unfortunately, it doesn't work that way when you have such a big person as Arsene Wenger living mm. the same way Sir Alex Ferguson left. Oh, they were taking a lot of space in the club. So what's going wrong? What, what do you feel like is uh, the underlying issue here? Just that Wenger, because you can't just... Say that's the reason. What do you think is going wrong right now? Do you think now is going wrong? It's not going great. Yeah, but it's on the verge of becoming okay. Yeah. I I personally believe I rather see the team the way they're performing today than last year or the year before. Yeah. Now there seems to be a team. 
they, they've tried different things, uh, especially behind the scene yeah. to replace Arsene's uh, position in the club. He was obviously the manager, chief scout, uh, sporting director. He was doing all of it, you yeah. know. So there was uh, a little bit of adjustment. Now Edu is in charge of that part with Mikel and they've got a good supporting staff. So they are building again and uh, yeah, it's looking better, obviously, you know, because the start was horrible mm. and I was really doubting that they would improve. But so far, so good. Facing United uh, on Thursday, we'll see. Yeah, Arsenal and United are just like cryptocurrencies, man. You look at your phone, one day they're up and you're feeling really good. And then you go to show someone, the next day it's gone all the way back down again. You're just <laughs> like, oh man, <laughs> what can you do? Dude, what what uh, leaving thoughts would you like to... Get? I mean, I want to talk a bit longer because, I mean, I know we've gone over the usual time, but come on, man. This, yeah, is, Jib this is Jibble with Sylvester. Let's, yeah, let's yeah, get some please. stuff, that, some exclusives <laughs> out. I know you know some hidden gems that we, get, we need to get him to talk about, you know. And he said he's got all night, so uh, you know, another four hours to go. <laughs> you were there in uh, Villarreal when uh, there was a fight at, uh, at lunch yes. between William and, uh, and uh, Alex. Well Alex I, was, I was. He was there. First line. Yeah, we were sitting on the same table, like the French table. Yeah, yeah. I was like, what is going on here? Yeah. Come on, set the scene. I don't want you to tell this. I want you to tell the story like the moon, Look, the moon it, was shining off the glass. The no, French table it, was sitting down. It, it always come out from nowhere, yeah. you know, before a game. Yeah. And things got fired in a split moment. And suddenly you see everyone joining and, and suddenly everyone uh, sitting on their own table, you know. And he was like, whoa, 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 what? Yeah. What and I think you you put, you stood up now. Sorry? You stood up now? Yeah, I think so. We tried to separate the, the two because we had a big game. We need, <laughs> we wanted our best players to be and there. The thing we you did. wanted to eat, bro. You didn't even <laughs> what, you what's you're going just, on? You were just like, hey, guys, this is our first good meal I've had in a while. Can we do this later, guys? No, it's, yeah. Uh, yeah. Things you try to understand, but mm. there's no way you can understand. We're all human beings at the end of the day, right? Everyone has a bad day or, or you think we it's remain, deeper? At the end of the day, we are a human being. Mm. It happens in every single team. But I think we use that during the game to perform and I think we won the game. Yeah, we won. But in usual business, like normal business, mm. corporates, you wouldn't see a yeah, fight Yeah, you wouldn't like get a fight like that, right? It's only in, in two sports, really. Yeah. Hockey also. Yeah, yeah. No, but hockey, yeah, sports, hockey, yeah. hockey you're supposed to fight. <laughs> you know? But I mean, you had the si a similar situation with the the whole Barton thing, right? Um, that with we spoke Stavo? about. Yeah. You know, that kind of stuff is not... I mean, it's very strange. You kind of understand with two opposite teams, like maybe a scuffle happening. On, I mean, there's a beautiful picture of you and, uh, and Zlatan. <laughs> Zabaleta? No, Zlatan. Oh, well, where he's he, uh, he yeah, yeah, he just grabbed your face like that. But you see, so you understand the you know that kind of stuff. But in teammates. a training, teammates like there's got to be a kind of yeah. But look, we're spending more time with teammates than our own family. Mm. We see each other every two days. Okay, but you got to remember, you're also on camera, and you're also like a, there's there's we a certain level being. of respect. We are human being. People forget it. We have moments, bad moment, good moment, and sometimes we we'll just let it go. No, it's not a good image to show on TV, mm. but it happens. How many red cards you have? <laughs> fighting one. Fighting one. Yeah. Head. No, no, no. Forget fighting. All of them together. How many red no, cards? No, not many. Many, maybe three. Three. Headbutt. Yeah. I had a, had a kind of problem with uh, Zabaleta. Yeah. Before, that was 2012. Then you gave him a Zizou. Uh, before uh, before playing with him. It was head to head. You headbutt him in the face. <laughs> Young. I gave him the head shot. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know, but because I understand Spanish yeah, and yeah. at the end of the game, I was running. He was in front of me and I just protected my face, pushing him. We both fell and suddenly I stand up. He was just here. Yeah. So I was like, yeah. you know, head against head and bust up company came and he just put his yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I got surprised because he just put his hand and I went back two yeah, minutes yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then suddenly red red but I was going through a tough period so I just lost it because yeah. three games in a row I got stamped by uh, 
ליבוריה? And you're like, not this leg, not this leg. This one's been through a lot enough already, but I got to the other leg. The referee didn't tell nothing. Yeah. He got suspended after, but I was thinking, oh. Yeah. Liboya. Yeah. We referee didn't cut my, cut my belly. He jumped like out the car for the header. He cut my, my shirt. Arsenal shirt. with your shirt. The referee didn't say nothing. So when this happened, I lost it. You're like, okay, yeah. You know? So, and you? How many years got? Lee Boyer, for sure. This guy, everybody had an argument yeah, with yeah. this guy. He was nuts. Yeah. Absolutely nuts on the pitch. Huh? I just tackled it, just went like. Oh, yeah. Oh. yeah. You know? And he got away with it all the time because, yeah. you know what? This is Lee Boyer. That's what yeah, the referee yeah, yeah. would tell you. It's Lee. Yeah, yeah. You know. It's the same I'm one like, with like Vinnie Jones, right? What? Vinnie Jones was so, doing all what? that dirty stuff. How many red cards you had? One. When? How? Against Arsenal, headbutt. <laughs> No way. El Jungberg. <laughs> What's wrong with you French guys, bro? <laughs> There's something that is happening in training that we don't know about, bro. <laughs> they are promoting headbutts well, in the French national team. There is one who is more famous <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. than us, so it's okay. Wow. Yeah. That's incredible. Yeah. One red card. One thing I wanted to ask you, um, I literally forgotten. It was so important, man. When do you get your red card? Mine? See, the first one, I've had quite a few uh, red cards, um, to be honest. The World Cup, no? No, 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 no. no. Mm. It was in the Euros. Ah, so Euros. what we do is we play different districts. I had the uh, District 13 from France would come, Trocadero would come and play against us. And I, I just felt like, you know, people were just, because you know when you're too fast and you're unbelievably skillful, mm-hmm. <laughs> people find it really hard not to take out their aggression on you when they just can't do anything. Of course. You know, and especially when like stars are around your feet and there's like magic and dust and stuff like they, so they kind of, and like sometimes, one time I retaliated, but. Forget about that. Let's talk about that. <laughs> yeah. But what's what's so? What do we do now? Where where is Bakari's future? I mean, obviously Dubai. I want to pass my coaching badges to have them. I'm not sure I have the strength mentally to be coach. You mean profession? You want to do it professionally? Coach. Yeah. Um, yeah. I'm focusing on something I will speak about later because on, it's still on the next undercover. Show. Okay. But I will come for sure and, and speak about it. Nice. If you invite me, of course. No, no, of course you're more than invited. But I want my uncle to be no, here. for sure. I mean, we're, we're, <laughs> for those of you who don't know, we're starting another show. <laughs> me and uh, me and uncle are starting another show. So uh, for sure you'll be a regular on that show all the yeah. time. I've been working um, on something since November 2020. And nice. hopefully I'll be speaking to him about it. Nice. And other than that, just getting on with it. Dubai is home now. Yeah. I want today give back. That's my aim to give back what I had the chance to experience. Yeah. Especially for young, I was speaking about the mental health. You should rephrase that. You're not giving back. You're sharing mm. because nothing, nobody gave you anything. Yeah. You True. worked really, really hard to get there and to achieve what you've done. So I agree. Yeah. what's in your heart really is sharing. Yeah, because you care. That's exactly what I was going to say, but you were too far away for me to tap you, so he did it, and he won. <laughs> he won this race. For <laughs> no, <laughs> it's true. I just oh, yeah, want to yeah. share yeah. as much as I can because I wish someone did. Mm. Financial part, he did for me. But I remember when I start getting into pre academy, my dad didn't know where to start. Mm. So maybe if someone stepped to him, I was lucky to have good people around me but unfortunately many didn't do a career because they had the wrong people around them mm. and it's sad to see some talent just wasted wasted mm. because of the agent or mm. so if you have any kids watching i know yeah, he's a please, good guy he has do. his own he has the, the the guts to become an agent it's not it's, it's not, not that's not the world that's not the word you were going to say first <laughs> The cojones. <laughs> he was like, he was like, he changed his, even his head shape. He was like, he has the the guts to. Uh, you know, I was gonna say, it, but that's all. This camera. No, no, it's all right, bro. This, this show, bro. This, this has been a very polite Look, version he of has the show. The balls to yes, do it because yes. being an agent is yeah. difficult. Yeah. Because most of the time you have a bad image. Yeah. And to start from nowhere is difficult. Mm. You need to to hire the right people to work for you. Don't forget. As long as you have the right person around you, you're safe. Mm. You can have the biggest agent on newspaper, but he won't be looking after yeah. you. When, when I and go into meetings in the, when I meet clubs or families or players, I go, I go like this. <laughs> <laughs> you have way, to. Bro. Yeah. You have to. It's yeah. really important. Yeah. People don't really uh, yeah. take care of, they want the best today. 
because mm. it's on the newspaper every day. Yeah. And finding the right team is really important. I mean, you've got a really good team with you. Excellent team. Um, which is really, really important. Having someone that you can trust um, when you're building stuff and building empires is, is really important as well. Yeah. If you want to go fast, go alone. Yeah. If you want to go far, go together. I love that. Mm -hmm. Bakari, final words, leaving words for them. Look at this camera here. And I want you to... Uh, in Arabic? In Arabic, English, Spanish, Italian, and German. I will say, Akram Kalla. Habib, it's so wicked. I like hearing oh. you speak Arabic. <laughs> no, so it's, it's been great. Uh, it's not often that we have the chance to speak openly. I think it, it's nice sometimes to be, to be, to be ourselves. Mm. So thank you from so much for inviting us inviting my uncle next to me <laughs> i feel more safe you yeah know? but uh, he just told you he just literally told you he felt unsafe when it was just me <laughs> <laughs> he's like i feel more safe now <laughs> yeah, yeah yeah no it's it's just great to be open open to people yeah, and yeah. maybe people will love to hear stories and hopefully answer your question the way you no no it. for sure it's been it's been emotional and amazing bro and for sure we're going to get you back on again yeah. um 100 on the four or five shows that we're starting now and uh, keep your eyes peeled. Maybe the Bakari Sanya podcast is going to be coming out soon. So we'll, uh, <laughs> we'll let you know what's going on that. We'll have to find out about what happened in November and then uh, we'll get through. Um, dude, it's been an absolute pleasure to have you. Thank you. And uh, again, I only wish we could do more time, but we will definitely get you back on again. Thank and you. Um, nice to make the circle a bit bigger. And uh, what can I say? Merci. Grand papa. <laughs> Toto. Uh, thank you so much for coming down as usual. Thank you. Um, you need to come back to training. You've been taking it very easy right now. <laughs> but uh, I'll give you the, till the end of December and then we're back on again. We're back on again. Um, guys, I've been AJ. They've been great. <laughs> and they've also been Sylvester and Sanya. And I hope you enjoyed it. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And we'll see you next time. Boom. Boom.